trading volume is another one of those essential fundamental blocks that you can find inside of most charting platforms. You really have two key pieces. We have price, which is up here inside of Thinkorswim, and the second piece is volume. In today's video, we're going to focus in on the second piece, trying to build a scan in which we can identify places in which we have increasing volume that's above average. Now, we're going to be using consecutive number of bars that this happens, all with the idea of trying to find those momentum stocks, those stocks in which maybe a trend is about to form, uh, and use volume as our indicator to help us do just that. Now, if you're new to our channel, uh, we have another set of scans that we've already built as well called the unusual volume scans. They're right here, and both of these scans are around using the volume as a relative standard deviation study instead of the volume average study, which is what we're going to use in today's video. So now if I come back inside of Thinkorswim first, let's open up this study. This is a free study. It's available inside of Thinkorswim. Just search volume average right here. Now, inside of this code, we can see we have a few different plot variables. The first variable is the actual volume, which is called vol. The second variable is the average over whatever length that you have it set to, which by default is 50, and we're on a daily time frame chart. So this is the average volume over the past 50 days. Now using both of these variables, we can build our scan and essentially replicate the study, pulling out only the pieces we care about and then trying to scan for specific conditions inside of there. Now one other thing that's important here is the coloring, the green versus the red bars versus the cyan bars inside of volume. Now since first we'll be building a bullish scan, so increasing volume for three bars in a row, we care more about the green color, which is dot color up, and the condition there is our closing price of today's candle needs to have exceeded our closing price from the previous day's candle. So this is an additional condition that we can add if we want to make sure that we're scanning for only the green bars. Conversely, if we're looking for bearish trends, then we'd be looking for where the vol color is down, meaning our closing bar today is less than our closing bar from the previous bar. So these are really the three different uh, pieces of this code that we will need, the vol variable, the vol average variable, along with the logic that's used for the actual coloring piece. Now let's get started with writing our scan. So I can head over to our scan tab right here. This now brings us into a fresh new scan. I have no filters loaded on, so let's start building this up piece by piece. In the top right, you should see add filter, click stock, and the first two filters I'd like to add around just price along with basic volume conditions to filter out the e-liquid names. So here I might say something like our bid price is greater than, let's call it $20. Uh, and then we can add one more filter. And here this one might be set to just general volume. And there we'd like to find or scan through only the stocks that have at least 500K in volume. So these are two basic filters that we've added in. If I click scan here, you'll see that number from that 6,500 reduced all the way down to about 1,396. So we'll continue filtering this out some more, but let's use this as our base. Now for our third filter, which is the volume scan that we're building in this tutorial, I'll click add filter, and this time choose study. This lets me write my own custom code, and this function only works in the live uh, money account of Thinkorswim, not paper trading. Now here, wherever you see ADX crossover, click that dropdown, choose custom, and navigate over to the ThinkScript editor. And this is where we can write our code. Now I think before we start writing uh, the code, let me just create a little bit of a game plan here so we know what we want to write. I think there's really two different lines that we'll have in this code. So we'll say line one is going to be something like the uh, volume Boolean variable which measures if our volume conditions are true. And so here we really have a handful of different volume conditions, right? So we'll say something like vol condition number one is our volume needs to be greater than our volume average. And in this case, we'll use the default. So volume needs to be greater than the past 50 bars or 50 days, since this is off of a daily time frame. Now our second condition, so we can say vol condition number two, is the fact that volume needs to be increasing compared to its previous bar. So that means volume on today's bar needs to be greater than volume from the previous bar. This lets us now create that histogram, which is increasing in value, meaning volume is starting to accelerate. Now our third condition is going to be around that close variable that we just saw to make sure we scan for green bars for our bullish trades and then red bars for our bearish trades. 
So there we have close is greater than the previous close for bullish, and then close is less than close one for bearish. So these are the conditions, three different volume conditions that this volume Boolean variable needs to account for. Once we have that line written, line number two of our code is going to be quite simple, and that's going to be plotting the output in which the above Boolean variable is true for uh, three consecutive whoops, consecutive bars in a row. And for this, we're going to be using the sum function. And that's pretty much it. It's a very straightforward scan that we're going to be writing, but you'll see just how effective it is in terms of helping you find places in which that condition is true, like we saw in GM. So let's start with the volume condition first. So I'll say def volume condition. And let's take our first uh, criteria here, which is volume needs to be greater than volume average. So first thing I need to do is reference the study from which we pulled that out. So that was the volume average study. I'll add parentheses, which tells Thinkorswim that, hey, this is a study, a function that's built inside of Thinkorswim. And two there, the plot that we'd like to reference is vol. And this needs to be greater than the same study one more time. And this time, the vol average uh, plot variable out of that study. So now if I were to just close this out with a semicolon, you'll see this compiles without any error. So this on its own is now looking for all the places in which our volume is greater than the volume average over the past 50 days. Now we can add in condition two, which is our volume needs to be greater than our previous day's volume. I'll continue using the same volume average function here, but you can also just type volume if you prefer to do that. So I'll say volume average dot vol is greater than volume average dot vol from the previous bar. So that's now two different conditions we factored in. The first, again, to recap, volume is greater than our average volume of the past 50 bars. The second one is saying, and today's volume bar is greater than yesterday's volume bar in terms of height, uh, in uh, the histogram height. Now, finally, the last condition we have is the fact that it's a green bar, which means that our closing uh, price from today's bar needs to be greater than our closing price from the previous day's bar. So these are the three conditions, and this is again for uh, bullish volume. If we wanted to find bearish, all we would do is change this greater than to be a less than, uh, and we could flip it. Now we need to uh, create the sum variable, which actually gives us all the places in which this condition is true for three bars in a row. So for that, I can say plot signal is equal to sum, and find me all the different places in which this volume condition bar over the past three instances is equal to three, meaning it's true all three of those times. Volume was greater than its average. Volume was continuously increasing for the past three bars. And for all three of those bars, the actual histogram on the volume was green. So that's our condition. If we click OK now, go ahead and run this scan. We're currently at 1396 symbols. Let's see what happens. Bam, we filtered it down to just two stocks in which these conditions are true. Uh, General Motors along with PLYM. Let's take a look at both. So General Motors, we've already taken a look at, but this is the pattern we're looking for. Three bars with greater than uh, average volume, three bars in which our histogram is increasing, uh, and three bars in which all three of those bars are green. So General Motors is a stock that fits this criteria. If we move on to the next one as well, PLYM, you can find a very similar pattern here as well. Uh, a little bit more strength inside of Plymouth Industrial. It's a REIT, but one, two, and three bars of increasing volume. All three are green, and all three are above average. And that's how the scan really helped you find all the different places from that 1396 uh, list of symbols where volume is actually increasing in the way we would like it to. Now, if we want to change this to a weekly time frame, let's just change this D to a week instead. Click Scan and see what that does to our results. So here we have four results in total. Let's pull out AMD just as an example. So I'll come into our charts, type in AMD, and this time we go to a weekly time frame, which is what we scanned. So if I load in weekly, we'll see here one, two, and three bars of consecutive rising volume all above that 50-day average line, all green bars. So just like that, we now scan daily and weekly timeframes for bullish setups. Let's try one more example, which we can change to a bearish example. So I'll change this now to a less than or equal to, which tells us these are red histogram volume bars. We'll click OK. We can change this time frame from a weekly to a daily. And let's go ahead and run this scan to see what kind of results we get. OK, so there we have three different bars. We have JAMF, U, and USO. Let's start with JAMF. 
actually we'll probably just focus on that the JAMF off of the daily time frame we take a look here we have one two and three bars of consecutive volume that's decreasing red histogram bars uh, this is I think leading into earnings and then falling even after earnings so this does meet the criteria we're looking for and now you have the bearish side we'll do one more that's maybe a little bit less weird of a symbol we can try USO USO we have one two and three bars again of above average volume uh, all three bars consecutively uh, and with a red histogram bar letting you know it's bearish price action so that really is the scan that we were looking to build in this tutorial we built it for both bullish and bearish sides that you can use on any uh, different time frame that you'd like we've been focusing on the larger time frames but you could also change this down to something like a one minute a five minute whatever it is that you're looking for and try and find places in which this volume condition is true thanks for watching the tutorial this far uh, if you are looking to download this in case you have any errors with your code when trying to copy it, I'll leave a link to the download link in the description box as well. But hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have a great rest of your weekend. Take care everyone and good luck trading this upcoming week.